So we continue our little chats this particular season of behind the scenes at uh, Crowley's Under and good to welcome John Dillon who uh, has been here quite a long, long time I think that uh, has brought you to all sorts of roles. First of all, John, uh, nice to have you with us. We're going to talk about what you, your main job is at the moment. I want to turn the clock back because you also have an association as a Crowley's Under player. Yeah, I think I was joining the club when I was just 10, 9. Um, left was was released as a first year pro um halfway through went out on loan um to the conference north i broke my ankle um went to iceland to get to recuperate to get to get back fit because the season was finishing here and then unfortunately at the end of it there was there was nothing um there for me so that was that was um 19 i think i was and i came back when i was 20 25, 26, and I'm now seven, eight years later, yeah, still here. How was it, though, when that, you know, your career was going the right way, wasn't it? Yeah. There was a high hopes that you, you were going to have a, a good playing career, but when you got a serious injury, how did you cope? I think at the time, you, you, it happens, and um, you think, you know, that you, you're going to, you'll be fine, because, you know, I'm playing for crew, and I'll, so it was a bit of a reality check only at home once I got back fit and then found out that I wasn't getting another contract. I think that was the, where I was like, now where? Um, and it's tough because them, them days it was, it was reserve team football, so there was no real 21 football to potentially fall back into. There wasn't an extra group for that. So the, 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 the mindset for me was to try and continue playing football. But you're starting, you're starting again. You're only a young lad, and you're, you're looking for opportunities. Um, and then, fortunately, one random, I mean, whatever day it was, it, I got a phone call um, from from Paul Cook, who was um, the manager of, of Sligo Rovers in Ireland, asking me did I want to go over. Um, and so I spent four years in, in Ireland in that league, and that was they, they, they were the most enjoyable times. It was good. Just turning that clock back then when you were at Crew, who was around? Who, who, who were the players? So if you go off sort of like the youth team, because you, you, you double up with the age group above you, um, it, it consisted of, say, players who've, who've gone on and done well. You've got your Billy Jones, Nicky Maynard, um, Sean Miller had a good career. Um, Mark Carrington was in there. Um, trying to think who else. They, Michael O'Connor done well. So it was, it was a good age group um, and, and the year above, so we had a good youth team, so they were the main, the main ones, yeah. So when your sort of footballing career was sort of coming to the end and you decided it was to look elsewhere, what prompted you and what made that decision and where you wanted to go? I think, I, so I'm getting to like 25, 26 at this point and I'm like full-time football in Ireland, but I need a career ahead of me. So I actually... Um, decided when I came home that I wanted to do my coaching badges. I was going into it blind, I didn't know if it was something I wanted to do. Um, and funnily enough, I actually, I came home and I went and watched Crew's um, reserves at the time. It was a reserve game, it was away somewhere um, on a Tuesday wet and cold night. And I went and watched it and James Collins came out and said, how are you? And was speaking to me and and he just touched on it and he just said, you should come, come down and have a look at the coaching and the academy and see, see if you, you fancy it type of thing. So that sort of spiraled from there. So I come down and um, coached coach for a couple of years in the academy first to begin with. In, 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 the, in the middle of all that, I, I was doing um, my coaching badges, which I'd done and I'd, I'd passed. So that's where it all stemmed from, really, to be honest with you. Did you unearth a gem in those couple of years of coaching or not? Well, it's funny because some of the lads who you've, who you've either seen being sold in the last year or two, um, they were like, they were, they were just like under 16, so I've seen them. Um, and now some lads in, in the team now, they were at that age group where, where I was. I was predominantly with Alex Morris, fun, fun, funnily enough. Mm. Um, he was under 13 level. So there's from the last, from under 13, so if you go over the last five, six, seven years, any players in that group, I've, I've seen them coming through, yeah. So 
So let's bring you right up to date and let our you know viewers for the web website know what you what you are. What what do you do now? You've got more than one role, haven't you? Well, like a lot yeah, of people, like a lot of crew. Yeah, yeah. So you got Grant Crownsman's the kit man and all that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 predominantly consists of opposition analysis. Um, so analysing the opposition, um, finding their strengths and weaknesses, uh, post match on us, how we can do better. Um, analysing ourselves, but predominantly opposition analysis. And then that, that ties in because obviously you get to know a lot about the uh, the players in the league that you're in at that particular time. That ties in with knowing your players, alike, if you like, at them levels. So the recruitment falls into that. Um, throughout the years, it's you know, you've know you got you've got your, your, your softwares now which allow video platforms, um, which a lot um, every club will use to um, look into recruitment, um, it's Y Scout that's called. And then obviously besides all that you're out and you go to games and the odd occasion and you go and you watch and, and that's sort of tying in now with with what we think we're using some data and we've got scouts out there as well so it's a bit of a combination of the three. You've got the video side of it as well as seeing games and knowing your players. You've then got the data side of it and then you've got the the, um, the old school scouting just being out there and watching the game. So you've got a decent combination. Do you feed all your information back to the management team, or do you do some back to the players as well? I think we, we, we've more, more so this year. We've done. Um, we'll do some group work, so we'll do some defensive unit work. We'll have the defenders in. We'll have the midfielders if we want to do midfielders and, and so on with the strikers. Um, so what you'll find is there's there's always um, certain players who are very um, I want to say deep. They, they, they really want to know the ins and outs of the, the opposition player so they may come to you and, and ask you well, what this player so then I'll provide some video footage of what I feel that player's strengths and weaknesses are and, and fire it across to the player himself to have a look and see what he thinks so he gets to see it before he actually plays um, against that particular player um, so yeah I think we, we, we go through a lot of individual stuff with players and, and as a team collectively and units so it's all covered are they receptive to that, the players? Because it's I think, like being back in the classroom yeah, at school. Yeah, it? it is. I think naturally, you know, players learn in different ways. They'll learn visually, so they'll want to see it. And, and some will, will learn just through listening. Um, and some doing it. Or some will do all three. Some will do one, some will do two. But you do find there is a, there is a, a, a cluster of players, a certain players who are deep or the big on it. Um, and then naturally, there's going to be players who probably learn more in different ways, so whether that's out on the pitch and or listening in the classroom. So that's why it's important that you, you sort of, you do drip feed all three in, in terms of, um, you know, giving them the visuals to see, to see, doing it out on the pitch, and then obviously the information that's given out to them on the pitch or in the classroom as well. And on match days, you, you, you have your laptop with you, what, what, what are you actually doing? You're also in contact down, down below. I think mainly you sit yeah, in the stand. Yeah. What, what, it, do you, what do you do on match days? Well, predominantly match days, you, you'll, you'll, you'll code the game live. Um, any any sort of patterns that you're spotting. So anything you think, well, you know, this needs adjusting, or we need to do this, or can we do this? Um, so then all you all you can do at that point is anything you're spotting, you can clip it so you can show the actual footage of what it is you think you, you're spotting. Um, and then, obviously, it's up to the manager. You 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 give him that information, and predominantly, the staff between us all will sort of see if we want to. You know, if, if it is something that needs adjusting, whether we go ahead and do it or not. Um, and what it also does is it just allows in. So it might be incidents during the game. It might be incidents. There might be attacking clips. You might want to see an incident that's happened. Um, but it's predominantly for 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 the. Um, I suppose the the. The, the, any patterns of play within the game that you feel like you're spotting, which can be of an advantage or which isn't really helping you. So just to wrap it all up, John, of course, it didn't just quite work out for you as, as a professional career at Crown Alexander, but it, it helped you along the way. And now you're back as a part of a manager's new managerial team. And I think you're quite enjoying it all. Yeah, as I say, I think the, the for my role, my, my sort of remit is seeing um, things being put out into practice on a game day, so based on the opposition. Um, so at the minute, as much as we want to win more games of football, you can see that there's a structure behind the ball and we're, we're good defensive, we're structured, we're solid. Um, 
obviously want to score more goals and, and win more games of football. I'm sure that'll come. But at the minute, I'm really enjoying it because the lads, you know, Alex and Lee and, and Kenny and Michael, they're all really good coaches. So based on our position and what we want from our own team, both of them put together, you can see that it's being put together out on the training pitch, which is then being transferred onto the pitch, particularly with, as I say, the, the I think the, the shape within the team and the organisations is really there. So I take uh, enjoyment from that because at the end of the day, it sort of shows that you're, what you're trying to do, i.e. put together um, ways of beating opposition or certainly stopping them. I can see, I can see signs of that.